Hey guys, welcome back to the Chicago White Sox franchise. In this episode, we're going to be playing the month of June. And we, uh, well, I'm going to spoil it from the title so you guys already know. But we will be calling up our number one prospect in the organization, Colston Montgomery. We'll get to that in a second. But really quickly, just want to thank you guys for the support on the series so far. If you guys are enjoying it and if you enjoy this episode, please don't forget to leave a like. Really will help me out. Thank you so much. Anyway, in, in the standings... Remember, we ended the last episode showing that we are in first place by a half a game. A half a game against the Guardians. Only a game against the Royals and a game and a half ahead of Minnesota. So it's all tight and it's so early, but we are in first place. Andrew Benintendi's off to a hot start. So is Aloy Menez batting 304 with 10 homers. Gavin Sheets has 10 homers as well. And he's batting 283. He's overperforming as well. Andrew Vaughn, I think we're going to move him from the four hole. 244 with three homers is not a fourth hitter. Yo Mankata's doing better. 253 and five homers, not bad. Paul DeYoung, only 209, six home runs. But again, he's going to actually be playing second moving forward. Mike Moustakas is going to hit the bench. He's only hitting 212 with four homers. Max Stassi, not doing bad. I mean, you know, catcher position is weak. And Brett Phillips has done the job so far. Filling in for the injured Luis Robert. On the bench, Dominic Fletcher hasn't been playing in center because he's been struggling so bad. So we're just kind of platooning him and Brett Phillips. Nicky Lopez gets in when he can. Uh, same with Martin Maldonado. He plays against lefties. Not doing great. And Kevin Pillar has just been doing awful. He's actually the guy we're going to send down. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'll show that in a second. Michael Kopech has been phenomenal in the rotation. So he's going to stay there for now. Same thing with Jake Woodford. Been great. Mike Soroka, also sub the first three guys, sub three ERA. Garrett Crochet, who just recently moved to the starter role, has a great ERA, but only 24 innings pitched, most of that being in the bullpen. Still working him into being a starter. We changed his overall, to, I mean, his position to a starter, and his overall went up, so I didn't affect that at all. But is what it is. Eric Fetty pitching great as well. Our bullpen is a little shaky. Tuki Toussaint and Chris Flexen are in the fours. They're our long relief guys. Joe Barlow's been good in 27 innings. Tanner Banks has not been good at all. Neither has Jordan Leisure, so that they might go up and down. They fluctuate. Dominic Leone's been fantastic. Same thing with Jonathan Brebia. We're actually going to move Brebia to our closer role, and Jesse Chavez is going to go down in the pecking order in the bullpen because he's struggling. 5-6-3 ERA in 24 innings, and Brebia has a sub-1 ERA in around the same innings pitch, so two less innings, but... He's going to be our new closer, Brebia. So before we get to Colston Montgomery, let's check out our other youngsters. Drew Thorpe's continuing to shine in AAA. We're not going to touch him right now, especially because our starting pitching's been good. But a 1.83 ERA in AAA right now. Jairo Iriarte, he's been fantastic as well. 2.63, which makes Drew Thorpe's look even better. He's fantastic. Noah Schultz, we finally moved him to the starting uh, rotation, so he gets starts, and he's been great. Sub-3 ERA and AA for Noah Schultz. He's a guy we'll probably see go up to AAA. Speaking of going up to AAA, Edgar Quiero, we didn't show him last episode, one of our top prospects in the catching position, switch hitting catcher. He's batting 308 in AA. He's tearing it up right now. We're not going to touch him just yet, but he's a guy you might see take a bump to AAA sooner than later. And, uh, yep, like we said, we are going to call, call up Colston Montgomery. He's the number four prospect in the MLB, obviously number one in our organization. 277 with 10 homers and 28 RBIs in AAA to start off the season. He's ready for the show. He's grown to a 73 overall. He's, you know, rather have him out there than just to see Paul DeYoung and Mike Moustakis hit around the Mendoza line. What's the point? And uh, tease this, but our corresponding move is going to just call down Kevin Pillar. We have like five outfielders on the team right now. No need for him. Pillar is designated for assignment. We're going to try to send him down to AAA. If anyone wants him, they can, they can take him. But He's not going to be making an appearance again, most likely. And there he is, Colston Montgomery, making his MLB debut in Chicago, just not at home as we're on the north side playing the Chicago Cubs. And Kyle Hendricks on the mound, reliable as ever. He's just one of those guys, doesn't throw hard, but man, does he paint the corners. And he seems to always have a pretty decent ERA. He's had some bad years you know, here and there, but he's pretty reliable for Chicago. As uh, Starting off this game is Andrew Benintendi with a base hit. He has been just red hot this season in the leadoff spot we would get him over to second and gavin sheets would draw a walk so we got first and second one out here in the first early rally for andrew vaughn and he's gonna keep this one fair just inside the line in left and that's a base hit runner scores from second and it's one nothing white Sox in the first next up yom mancada and he is going to find the hole in the infield that's a base hit no speed on the bases 
So we're going to hold the runner there. And Colston Montgomery is coming up. His first major league at bat is going to be with the bases loaded and one out against Kyle Hendricks. The 2-2 pitch to Colston Montgomery. And he is going to chop one up the middle for a base hit just under the glove of the pitcher. And this one gets through. It's a two RBI single for Colston Montgomery in his first major league at bat. What a way to start your career as he provides a spark right away. It's 3-0 White Sox in the first inning. This obviously will hold on to that ball. And it's a good thing. Hopefully a good sign of things to come for Colston Montgomery in his major league career. First base hit out of the way in his first at bat. And two RBIs to show for it as well. He stayed on that off-speed pitch nicely. And just brought it right back up the middle. So... Good to see you from Colston Montgomery. Next up would be Paul DeYoung. He's a new second baseman now every day, and he's going to chop this one to third. It's a 5-4-3 double play to end the inning, but we do score three in the first, so it's a good inning for the White Sox in this one as Kyle Hendricks was fed up with that inning. Glad to get out of it. Jake Woodford on the mound. 4-4, four 2-6-7 four, ERA. It's been great. Been The whole pitching staff has just been amazing so far, yeah, in the starting pitching at least. So hopefully we keep that up. We're going all the way to the top of the third. It's Gavin Sheets going to line a base hit in the left field. Still 3 nothing. So it's a one-out single for Gavin Sheets in the third. Uh, hopefully start another rally. Andrew Vaughn up next. And he's going to chop one up the middle. That's a base hit. We got first and second one out. So another rally here for the White Sox. It's time in the third inning. Next up, Yom Mankata. He's one for one already. But he is going to strike out swinging. On a very, very slow fastball. 87, my goodness. Colston Montgomery up next. His second at bat. And he's going to fly this one in the center. And that's a can of corn for Cody Bellinger out there in center. So one for two to start off his career. But still 3 nothing. In going into the bottom of the third. Cubs would have a guy on second, two out for Seiya Suzuki. But Jake Woodford gets out of that jam. High sinker. Freezes Seiya Suzuki right there. At the end of three, it's still 3 nothing White Sox. Cubs only with two hits to show for it. We're going all the way to the fifth. Runner on first with two out. And that would be Colson Montgomery's first defensive highlight. Uh, funny enough, he, nothing got hit to him besides that one so far. So he makes the play. In the sixth inning, Colson Montgomery would be coming up. But Yo Mankata is up right before him. And that's a base hit. One out base hit in the sixth inning. So Colson Montgomery coming up with another guy on base. So far, every time he's been up, he's had guys on. And his third at bat of his career is going to be lined to right field. It was hit pretty decent, but right at the right fielder. Suzuki makes the play, and Colston Montgomery's one for three so far on his Major League debut. Bottom half of the six is Woodford still on the mound. Still zeros on the board for Chicago. Here's Colston Montgomery. He throws it away, though, and... Safe as Seiya Suzuki, so a little bit of nerves in his MLB debut on the field. Even though it's a sixth inning, you can tell he's a little nervous on that throw. And uh, it should have been two out, nobody on. Now it's a base runner, and now it's a little bit of a mess because Cody Bellinger hits a base hit to right, and Suzuki goes first to third. Or was that Suzuki? I forgot who it was. So whoever it was goes first to third. Patrick Wisdom up next. He's going to fly this one in the shallow center, but Dominic Fletcher has no arm, so they should be deep enough to score a run. And... Uh, the runner will score from third. Yeah, it is Suzuki. And it, the runner will score. It's 3-1 now. Ian Happ up next. He's going to hit this one up the middle. Montgomery's actually going to make a nice play and throw the second for the out and to end the sixth inning. So just make a nice play there. His fielding stats aren't terrible, but it just must have been those, open, those uh, first game nerves, those debut nerves as he threw that one away. Anyway, we're going to the seventh. It's time for Joe Barlow, who's been great this season. But it's Dansby Swanson going to hit one up the middle for a leadoff base hit. So only a two-run game here. So those three runs in the first inning are still all we've got to show for it. Young Gomes, a couple batters later, as they get the runner to second, he's going to find the gap. This one heads all the way to the wall. And scoring easily is Dansby Swanson. Young Gomes actually went for third. And uh, I just, I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or, or what. I really did not think he was going to go to third. And he goes and sneaks in there with a the triple. Uh, runner on third, one out as Barlow gets Dominic Smith looking backdoor slider. Next up, Nico Horner. And he gets him to ground the second. Paul DeYoung makes a nice play. And we're out of the seventh inning, up by one. As we're going into the eighth. Jesse Chavez, our new setup guy. He's not the closer anymore. Hopefully he could do better in the setup role. And he does do good here. As, uh, he allowed a guy on, but he gets out of the eighth inning. And we're still up three to two. Top half of the ninth. We are going to look for insurance. Close to Montgomery. He's going to get one more at bat to lead off. He's one for three so far. He hits this one hard and lines it, but right at Dansby Swanson. And that's it for his debut. He goes one for four. So 
Not bad. He gets two RBIs, a single in his first at bat, but that would be it for him. As here we go, Jonathan Brevia on the mound, our new closer. As um, he's been fantastic, sub one ERA in 22 innings. But let's see how he does in that closer role. Dansby Swanson straight away, and that's a base hit up the middle. So the tying run is on base just like that. So hopefully Brebbia can settle down here. No closing is a different animal. Let's see if he's got it in him. Christopher Morell up next, and he is lacing this one into right center field. That finds the gap, heads all the way to the wall. Dansby Swanson's got good enough speed. He's going to score all the way from first, and this game is tied in the ninth inning. So Brebbia straight away, base hit and a double in the gap ties this game. Next up, Jan Gomes. He is going to hit one up the middle, but Brevia somehow makes the play, spins and gets that one in his glove, but the runner does go to third. Dominic Smith up with the winning run on third. He's going to hit this one in the right field. Gavin Sheets is not known for his arm with 80 speed. This will do it. The Cubs walk it off with a sack fly. They come back in the ninth inning and win it. Brebia's first outing as a closer does not go well. Sub one ERA all season, and then you get to the closing. It's a different animal, I'm telling you. You can see it there. Base hit, double, and then sack fly to end the game. As Brebbia not happy with himself as we lose this one. And we get some more bad news in this episode. Colston Montgomery is hurt. Finger contusion. He's going to be out for one to two weeks. We are going to send him to the 10-day DL. IL, excuse me. The only bright side with that is he's only out for one in-game, uh, you know, one video I mean, excuse me, one game in this video. This game against Seattle, he'll be out, but by the time we play the next one, he'll be back. As you see, we our record dropped below 500. We're starting to struggle a little bit, but we are going up against Brian Wu, who's doing awful this season. 64 innings, 5.77 ERA, so hopefully our offense can get going. It's Andrew Benintendi to lead off the game, and that usually means it's a base hit, and it is right here. Line drive, base hit in the right field. He's been amazing at the top of the order. Him and Eloy Jimenez have carried our offense. Just fantastic. Speaking of the devil, here he is, Eloy Jimenez. That's a base hit up the middle as well. First and second, nobody out to start this game against Seattle. So we'll see what we can get going here. Gavin Sheets is up next. He's going to ground one to first. On the second for one, to the pitcher covering first, and that's a double play. But we still have a runner on third. Two out for Andrew Vaughn. Can he come through? 2-1 count. And he's going to hit one up the middle. That is going to be through for a base hit off the diving glove of Jorge Polanco. And we take a 1-0 lead in the first. Eric Fetty is on the mound. He's having a great season as well. 3-1-9 with 70 innings pitched. Would not, I mean, I would take that every time from Eric Fetty. Eric Fetty has been great in the second. Jorge Polanco, he chops one through the infield for a base hit. That's the diving second baseman. I think that's Moustakis today at second base. Next up, Ty France, and he is going to hit one up the middle for a base hit. So two out, nobody on, and then back-to-back -back hits for Seattle. Has them in a little bit of a rally in the bottom of the second. Luis Urias is up next, and he's going to rip one into left center field. This one's headed towards the wall. It is off the top of the wall, the very top of the wall. Fletcher did not play that well at all, and both runs are going to score. It's a two-run double for Luis Urias. And Seattle takes a 2-1 to one lead in the bottom of the second. Next up, Mitch Hanniger. Fetty is going to get out of this, though, as he gets Mitch Hanniger to ground a third. And Mankata throws across the diamond. To end the second inning, Seattle up 2-1. The top of the third, it's two out, nobody on for Eloy Jimenez. And Eloy Jimenez is going to put a charge into this one to center field. Going back to Julio Rodriguez. He's still back. He's trying to time this up. He leaps, and he does not make the catch. It was hard to tell with the sun there if he robbed it or not. But that one is gone. Eloy Jimenez, solo shot to straightaway center field, ties this game at two. And that's his 12th home run of the season. Next up, Gavin Sheets. 2-1 count on him, and he's going to line one in the left field. Going back to the left fielder, he looks up, and this one's gone into the White Sox bullpen. Back-to-back -back home runs for Chicago as Eloy Jimenez and Gavin Sheets go back-to-back, -back and they take the lead 3-2. Gavin Sheets is his 11th home run of the season. And that's how we would take the lead. We're going all the way to the sixth. It's 4-2 now at this point. Eric Fetty just cruising along. He gets out of that sixth inning. And as you'll see here on the scoreboard in a second, Seattle just has three hits all in that same second inning when they had the three hits to take a 2-1 lead. So Fetty has calmed down. He's pitched great. We're going to go into the seventh with him. 93 pitches. You know, I don't really trust my bullpen. That's part of the reason. But make maybe a little bit of a mistake here as it's a leadoff ground rule double from Kyle Raleigh. 
and uh, we got they got to run our second no out. We still didn't take Fetty out. That was a mistake for sure because Luke Rayleigh he finds the gap. It's a double back to back doubles for Seattle. It's four three now, and uh, that would be it for Eric Fetty. We would take him out after this one. So he goes six plus three earned. He pitched pretty good though. Dominic Leone trying to get out of a jam. Runner on second. Nobody out. He would do that. He would get the first two outs. Luis Urias would be next, and he would strike him out. So he gets out of the jam in the seventh as it's 4-3 going into the top of the eighth. We do nothing in our half of the eighth. In the bottom of the eighth, it's Joe Barlow, and he gets J.P. Crawford to chop into a 6-4-3 double play to end the eighth inning. So, so far, bullpen is holding up. Good job from Barlow. He's one of our most reliable guys. In the ninth, we're looking for some insurance. And it's Yon Mankata smashing one to left center field. No doubt about this one. Mankata goes deep to give us some insurance in the ninth. It's 5-3 Chicago. And that one was blasted. You don't see a lot of no doubters the opposite way. But Yon Mankata smacked that one. Only seventh of the season. But uh, it was a good one as this one was no doubted. And that dropped. Very nice from Yon Mankata. 5-3. We would actually go on and send the rest of that top half of the ninth, and we would score another run. So it's 6-3 at this point, just to set it up the ninth inning for you. We're going back going back to Brebbia. Let's see if he could do better this time. Saves. He's one for three now, so not great in his first three, but he's got two out. Nobody on. We're up by three. That's Luke Rayley. He's going to find the gap again. It's another going to be another double for him. But uh, like we said, we're still up three. Mariners are down to their last out. So Brevia just needs one more out in this one. Next up is going to be Jorge Polanco. 1-1 one, one count on him. And he's going to find the gap. This one's headed for the wall. It is off the top of the wall. And another double for Seattle. Run scores. And now all of a sudden it's getting scary. Tying run is at the plate for Seattle with a guy on second. It's Ty France. And France is going to poke one into right field. This gets down in front of, in front of Gavin Sheets. Polanco's going to round third. He's going to score. It's 6-5 now in the ninth inning. And the tying run is on first with two outs. And that means Luis Urias is coming up. 3-2 count on him. He lines one up the middle. That is going to get down in front of Fletcher for a base hit. Thought about diving, but if I would have missed that, the game would have definitely been tied. Might have been over. As we've seen enough of Brebbia, again, he can't come through in the ninth inning. Got the first two guys out, and now it's just been a mess. We're going to Jesse Savez against Mitch Hanniger, and Mitch Hanniger's going to poke one through the infield for a base hit. Rounding third is the is the tying run, and he's going to score. Gavin Sheets' throw is way offline, and the Mariners have come back. Down three, two out, nobody on to tie this game in the ninth inning. We'd finally get out of it as Jesse Chavez would get Ryan Bliss to fly out in the center field but another blown save in the episode it has not been going well for brevia in the 10th we got a ghost runner on second it's Eloy Jimenez with a base hit up the middle rounding third and scoring is Andrew Benintendi and Eloy Jimenez is going to come through to lead off the 10th and give us the lead in the 10th inning unfortunately that was all we would get Eloy Jimenez would get over to second but it's uh Yo Mankata flying one into pretty deep left field but right in front of the track is the left fielder to make the play so we're going to the bottom of the 10th we gotta hopefully hold that runner that starts on second and sneak out of here with the win it's chris flexen we don't really know who else to go to so we go to chris flexen is jp crawford leading off he lines one to pretty deep left ben Intendi makes the play on the warning track tagging is the runner and he will get in to third so seattle's got that tying run on third one out it's julio rodriguez and oh my goodness rodriguez blasts one out of here no doubt about it. It's a walk-off home run in the upper deck for Julio Rodriguez. And yet again, not only have we blown a lead in the ninth inning, we've got walked off on for the first two games of this episode. It has not been going well. We have been free falling. That is for sure. Nothing going right in this episode right now. As uh, we're gonna, you guys are gonna see in a second. It is just not going well. As we're gonna up against the last game of this episode. We're going up against the Dodgers, and there we are, 39-41. and 41. So we're still kind of floating around 500, which is still better than what we would have thought. But, yeah, it's going downhill quickly. Michael Kopech on the mound. 2-11 ERA in 94 innings. Absolutely fantastic 
thought if he did bad, we would move him to the bullpen. But not only has he not done bad, he's done really, really damn good. 2-1-1 is, is nothing to laugh at. In the first, look who's back. Colston Montgomery. He's going to make the play here with ease this time. But just wanted to show that highlight to show he was back. As we're going to show all his at-bats in this one since it's the first video he's in. Of course. And, you know, already missed a few games with injury. So that's not a good sign. We're going up against future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw. Only has three starts, but he's been fantastic in all three of them. Leading off, it's Andrew Benintendi. And check out this play from the new Dodger shortstop, Mookie Betts. Is, uh, he looks like he's having no trouble with that transition. Beautiful play at short in the second. It's a runner on second with one out for, for James Altman. That's a base hit. And the runner is going to round third and score. Dodgers take an early 1-0 lead here in the top of the second inning. Bottom of the second is Colston Montgomery. Starting off 194, as you see. Not great. He lines this one in the center, but... That's a fly out for Colston Montgomery. So it's off to a very slow start in his major league career. That's to be expected, you know, and we've got plenty of patience with him. That's not the problem. Uh, in the fourth, though, it's Mookie Betts. He's going to hit a two-run shot out to left. It was 2-0 at this point. That makes it 4-0. And uh, check this out. Mookie Betts hits his 25th home run of the season already. My God, we're not even in July yet. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. 25 homers. Jumping ahead to the fifth is another Colston Montgomery at bat. He strikes out swinging against Kershaw. It's going to be 5-0 Dodgers at this point. We're going to jump to the sixth. It's 5-1 Dodgers now. And I just wanted to show this base hit from Yo Mankata because that would chase Clayton Kershaw out of the game. He goes five and two-thirds, one run, and he's phenomenal. Even though he's getting older, you know, obviously if this was Kershaw a couple years ago, it would not be coming out in the sixth inning after just allowing a base hit. But... You know, his, his stamina, I'm sure, has gone down. But he's still pitching great. The future Hall of Famer shuts us down. 5-1 would be the score when he got out of here. Colston Montgomery would be up next. And he's going to pop up to third, continuing to struggle. But like we said, we got plenty of patience. But uh, it's just this is not going well as a team. And Colston Montgomery's off to a slow start. But we can't wait till he heats up. In the eighth, though, it's Aloy Jimenez. He's going to find the gap. This one's not going to be caught. The run, uh, guys look up, and it is gone. It just gets out of here in the right center field. A two-run shot for Aloy Jimenez. And uh, hold on a minute. This game was nothing was really going on here. But 5-1 turns into 5-3. And we got something going. In the eighth, still Colston Montgomery. He's going to strike out to end the inning. He's, you know struggling anyway in the ninth let's see if we can get a rally this time against evan phillips as andrew vaughn puts a charge in a one deep in the left center field going back to the center fielder out many looks up but it's off the wall it's gonna be a lead off double for andrew vaughn and like we said hopefully maybe it's our turn to get a rally going in the ninth tying run is up it's mike moustakis he chops this one to first andrew vaughn goes over to third got a runner on third one out but that runner doesn't really mean anything max stassi up next three two count on him gonna fly this one into medium center field we are just going to tag with andrew vaughn because it should be deep enough and the throw is a good one but yeah it was a little too deep there for james outman and it's 5-4 we're going to our bench paul de young tying run we need some pop off the bench it was dominic fletcher's spot in the lineup so we try to get a home run from paul de young and he's gonna rip one in the left field it's a base hit he does his job gets on base so tying run on base now and we're gonna pinch run Dominic Fletcher form, so we get some speed out there a little bit. It's Andrew Benintendi, and that one's a wild pitch, as you see Dominic Fletcher's on because of that 70 speed. And uh, so now, just like that, we got the tying run in second for one of our best hitters, Andrew Benintendi. He hits this one up the middle, but nice play by the second baseman. And this one is over. Dodgers take the win, and we lose all three games this episode. This one, we really were dominated. The other two, we had it, and we blew it in the ninth, so some bad losses. But some good news to end it, at least. Luis Robert Jr. is no longer injured, so he will be back in the lineup going forward. Uh, he's, you know, we'll see what we do with him at the trade deadline. We got plenty of control, though, but at least he's back. Look at this awful month we had, especially in the middle there. We lost, uh, I think, 12 out of 13 games, if I've counted correctly, in the middle. It was bad, and then we finally just ran we randomly just swept Houston which was uh, surprising. And we got swept by the Dodgers. It, it was just a bad month. We're now 41 and 45, four games under 500. Uh, but we're around now where we would expect nine and a half games out of first place. Just like that, we started the episode half a game up. We end the episode and end the month nine and a half games out. So yeah, this is looking more realistic now. 
But, uh, you know, we still have some hope. We got Colston Montgomery, who hasn't heated up yet. We got a lot of other, a lot of other young prospects who, who might see time. So it is all right. There's the schedule. Looking forward in the next episode, we will have the draft, which will be very important. We'll have the all-star break. We'll see if anyone makes it. Maybe one of our pitchers. I mean, they are having a good year. Maybe Aloy Jimenez. We'll see. And then we will end on the trade deadline. So stay tuned for next episode. I will need you guys' help. We'll go over everyone's stats and see who we should trade who we should keep and just wait for a bit. Um, obviously, we'll be, we'll be selling at the deadline. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one.